Hey guys, Winnemute here, and today we'll be making four more motion graphics effects, this time text reveals inspired by modern user interface design. You can see a preview of this on the screen right now. Also, I don't know what any of these are actually called, so I'll be making up names as we go along. So we'll be setting up this scene similarly to in my previous tutorial, which you can see in a card. We're going to set this camera at the top by using Control shift 0 and then we're going to set it into orthographic view. Now uh, we have this text object, and we want to set the render engine to Eevee. So we'll have this text object, which you can add with Shift-A. Um, I'm going to change up the font a bit. You can find a lot of free fonts online if you just do a quick Google search. Um, and I'm just going to change it to a font called Elemental End, because I think it looks pretty cool. And I'm going to be just using the word animated for all of this, as that's going to be the theme of this tutorial, though you can change this to whatever text you want. You can edit this text by going to edit mode with uh, the tab button. Now we're going to convert this text into a mesh so we can actually do uh, mesh operations on it, and we're going to extrude it up a little bit. Just We don't need to extrude it up too much, though it doesn't really matter because our camera is an orthographic view. Then we're going to remesh it. Make sure to uncheck remove disconnected pieces so we can see every text. Um, and we're going to turn up the octree depth. This is going to refine the degree of detail that we're going to remesh the text to, just because sometimes the geometry is going to be a bit messed up and then whatever Boolean modifiers we're going to apply to it are not going to behave well. So we're going to have to remember to remesh uh, all of these texts with a bit of ext extrusion, otherwise they won't actually have any geometry to remesh. Now we want to turn on transparent film so our background is basically clear. And we can just scale and move this text to whatever size we want. We're going to give it uh, a basic material. I can't spell. Um, and I'm just going to turn it down to something emission uh, and black. Now we're going to have our actual background panel. So we're going to try to center everything. And then we're going to create two sort of Nine, uh, 45 degree rotated uh, diamonds that are just going to be sort of handles. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. And so what we're the general idea of all of this in all of these uh, effects is that we're going to position everything in such a way that this is the final result. So this is what it's going to look like at the end of a text reveal. Then we're going to go back and start keyframing um, from the start. So we, we're going to kind of animate this in a backwards order. I'm going to set the number of frames to 40, which I will do through the rest of the animations. Um, and then we're going to start making our Boolean object, which we're going to use to sort of selectively hide bits of the text. So I'm going to make sure it overlaps with the text in 3D space. And on the 40th frame, you'll notice that I'm going to keyframe the scales of pretty much everything. Now we can apply an intersect uh, operation. Uh, make sure you select the, the rectangular prism first, and then select the text, and then hit Control shift b Boolean Brush, Intersect. And now you can see the effect of that. All right, so make sure we select everything we want to keyframe. Um, and now we're going to move it to its initial position right here. Um, say on frame 5, though it doesn't really matter, you can adjust this how you like. And we're going to, at the first frame, just make everything completely invisible by setting its scale to 0 on the x-axis. And you'll notice that I didn't actually keyframe the positions of everything, so let's, let's do that again. So uh, let's set up the location and scale of everything. So the only things we're going to be keyframing in all of these, by the way, is going to be pretty much just the location and scale. Uh, and you can see that these two diamonds are kind of stacked on top of each other uh, because we haven't keyframed their locations. So we're going to go to the end of our animation and we're going to pretty much just align all of these items. 
keyframe their location and scale. And then you can see that those two handles sort of move along the length of our animation. And we're going to do the same thing with our uh, with our box. But you'll notice at the first frame, you can sort of see half the text, even though that's not really supposed to happen, uh, like right there. So we're going to just turn up the scale to like 0 0.001. Uh, you won't be able to see anything. It, it just sort of uh, fixes that weird glitch. I really don't know what's causing that. Uh, and you can see the effect here. Now let's give that background another, another emissive uh, shader, and we can change this to whatever color we want. And so you can see that our handles sort of shoot off to the sides alongside the um, alongside the actual uh, box background. And we can also add some other interesting effects as long as everything is uniform across the x-axis. So we have this weird underline thing. And here is what it looks like. All right, so uh, same setup. We're going to be making a different uh, effect this time, sort of an underline uh, reveal. So again, we set the engine to EV, camera, orthographic, top view, uh, background as transparent, all the same as we did previously. And everything, this is stuff we're all going to do uh, in the following tutorials as well. So let's go and change the font again to something nice and also change the words to whatever you want. This time I'm going to be using a font called Able. Again, it's up to you. Just do some quick search. I'm going to make a smallish polygon with uh, only uh, eight vertices, an octagon, I guess. And so we're going to just move this to top and bottom of our um, of our animation, sort of to frame our text. So we can also use the snap to grid function, which is quite useful. Just hit control while you're dragging and hold that down. And then you'll see that uh, our selection snaps to our grid lines. So let's just move everything to sort of center this. So it looks like it's at the corners of what we want. And then uh, we'll add some rails. So they're going to sort of uh, bound the top and bottom of this. and we just want to scale it up to what it's going to look like uh, at the final frame. All right, now we can give it a material. Uh, I'm just going to give it an emissive shader, just pure white. Uh, we can hit Control L um, with an active object selected and link all the materials so we don't have to apply material so many times. And we can also change the scaling on individual origins in order to uh, change the scale of those circles, though you can do that individually if you like to. All right, so now we're going to add another Boolean brush intersect. Uh, and you'll see this is a pattern that we're going to be repeating. So let's convert this uh, text into a mesh. Note that you won't actually be able to edit this text after you do this conversion. And we're going to extrude it up, then apply a remesh. You'll, you'll note that sometimes if you don't apply this remesh and extrude it upwards, you're going to see some weird effects when you try to apply a boolean, like some letters are just going to instantly appear, which is not good. So to be safe, we're going to remesh uh, all of these letters. Be careful not to set that octree depth too high because you are probably going to explode your computer as the number of vertices will go up exponentially. For most texts, I think about eight is enough, which will lead to a couple thousand vertices as opposed to maybe a few hundred, but that's what we need for this Boolean effect to work. So we're going to apply that Boolean uh, the same way as we did last time, selecting the outer box, then the text, Control Shift B, um, bool brush, and then uh, intersect. And now on the final frame, Let's just select everything, uh, and we're going to keyframe its location. And so we're, let's start with the dots. So you'll see this weird effect again. If we scale the X down to zero, it might show up a little bit. Some of the text might show up. So instead, we're going to scale it down to like 0 0.001. And now if we animate this, uh, the scaling of that brush, we can see that our text is revealed.
Now if we select our rails, we can keyframe their size at the start and the end, so they sort of instantaneously, in, instantaneously sorry, appear. And we can also add an offset to the uh, start of the rails and the start of the text being revealed, which I think adds a bit of character to the animation. Now we'll just set the position of our text. So these two, uh, sorry, of the handles. So we're just going to set the position on frame four, somewhere close to the origin of the rails. And this is what it'll look like once we set their locations and keyframe that. So we can do a couple of modifications. It's pretty cool that in Blender uh, 2.8x, we can actually just move around the, the handles of the keyframes in the timeline, uh, which is going to be very useful. And OK, here's a trick to make stuff disappear. Uh, Set a uh, keyframe at scale on a frame, and then the frame before that, scale it to zero, um, and keyframe that scale. And then you'll see that they sort of instantaneously disappear and appear like that. And that's pretty much the effect. And here's what it looks like. All right, I'm going to start off by setting the keyframes to 40. Um, orthographic camera, set it to cycles of accidents. So let's go back to Eevee um, and transparent background. Now this transparent background, I haven't explained this before, but um, it will be useful if you want to say overlay this on top of another video. We're going to set up the font the same way as before. This was the text. And we're going to sort of center it on the screen. So this time we're going to be doing sort of a, a scroll over effect where we have a box that goes over the position of the text and then uh, leaves in its wake the actual text that we want to show. So we're going to we're going to create that box right now, and we're just going to scale it up to cover roughly the area of that text. Now we can move its origin over to one side, and I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick, um, sort of applying sleight of hand in order to uh, conduct this animation in a way that it'll work. So you'll see that if we move that origin all the way over to the side, um, then we'll, every time we scale it on the x-axis, it's only going to scale in one direction relative to that origin, and it won't scale in both directions. All right, so you see that uh, I've keyframed the scale from the maximum at frame 15 to 0 on frame 0, or frame 1. Now we're going to flip uh, we're going to flip this. So watch the position of the origin carefully, that orange dot. We're going to scale it on SX minus 1, so we're going to flip it on the X axis, and then we're going to move its position all the way over there. So make sure you keyframe both the location and the scale. And you'll notice on frame 16, that origin swaps over to the other side, which is great because now when we scale it on the X axis, it'll scale uniformly down onto that side onto the right side as opposed to the left, since we've sort of flipped the location of the origin um, in such a way that no one would notice. If you look very closely, you'll see there's a bit of a, a jitter, since I haven't arranged it super precisely, but it doesn't really matter because you won't notice in the space of a single frame. Now let's convert this mesh into a, sorry, we'll convert this text into a mesh, and then we're going to remesh it. Uncheck Remove Disconnected Pieces, and we'll set up the octree depth to 8. You'll notice if we set it to 7, there might be a bit of weirdness in the M, um, like in the crook of the M, which is probably not what you want. Uh, although, if your computer is lagging, you may just want to leave it as, as a depth of 7. OK, so we've set up our Boolean brush, same way as before, selecting the brush, and then selecting the text. Uh, then we set a Boolean brush using the bool tool. All right, so we also have the origin of this Boolean brush set on the side, uh, as you can see, so that when we reveal it, it starts revealing from one side only. So while, so stylistically, what we want is for once that 
uh, that big block disappears, we want to have the text appear. So we're going to have the keyframe of the scale. Uh, we're going to have the scale at zero right after the block disappears, and then we're going to scale it up. And here's how that effect looks. And we can also reverse the keyframes, which is pretty cool if you want to see it in reverse. OK, so one last time, we're going to be doing sort of a, a side text reveal, which is uh, similar to the previous effect. Um, we're going to be doing all the same sort of setup, uh, going into Eevee, top view orthographic with a transparent background, and this font. Uh, this time I'm going to pick actor for no particular reason. So I'm just going to apply this emissive material. It doesn't really matter um, the color, but you can pick whatever you want. All right, so I'm going to have a sort of background again, similar to the first effect, uh, although this time it's going to start from the side. And this is probably going to be one of the most common effects that you'll see. Uh, you'll see this where someone wants to sort of introduce a character or an effect, but not do like a full title. So they'll just sh show this coming out from the side. So we're going to shift that origin and edit mode. So just hit tab and drag everything so that the origin is aligned with the left corner or with the left edge. Uh, and we're going to remesh that text again. Make sure to extrude it downwards, otherwise you're not going to see anything because you're only going to have a face with no volume. All right, so we're just going to make this thing appear from the side. So uh, you may be able to guess how this is done, again, with a Boolean intersect, um, and all of this animated with scaling on the x-axis. So we'll set the number of keyframes to 40. Uh, we set the film to transparent. And let's go to the final frame. We'll keyframe the scaling of that, then to the initial frame, we'll keyframe the scaling of that. And there we go, we have a, a scrolling background. Now we always want to add a little bit of an offset to the text, so we'll have the animation for the text not start on frame one. So let's again set up this uh, text um, intersect. We'll again move the origin over there, we'll scale it down. Make sure everything's intersecting with the text, and we're going to use the brush boolean intersect. Now on the final frame, or the initial frame, I don't know, make up your mind. Okay, so on the final frame, frame 35, we'll, we'll set the scale, and on the first frame, which is going to be frame 10 or 11 as opposed to frame 0, so there's a bit of an offset as you can see, uh, we'll keyframe the scale again. And there we go, we have a sort of offset, and uh, you can see that this text appears off to the side. We can add more of these uh, guide rails, I guess, I don't know what you'd call them, uh, by just duplicating the vertices on the edges and then moving them up a bit. Now you might want to change the colors and the fonts, uh, this is a bit garish, uh, so you might want to pick something that looks a bit better, but that's really up to you. Now, one trick so that we can actually move this text around is to create an empty. Uh, we can just move it close, uh, have the empty selected, and then we can parent it. Now, if we move around that empty, everything moves along with it, uh, which is one of the major uses of parenting. It's a very useful technique. All right, so this is how this effect would look, and typically you'd overlay that on top of something else. Alright, so that's the end of the tutorial. If you're interested in more effects like this, check out my other videos on motion graphics and Blender. Subscribe and like if you like this sort of content or found it useful, and tell me what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks for watching!